as you can see, we run a pretty useful farm here. Most of it is given over to cereals, though we also run a herd of pedigree Frisians, and we are doing quite well in bacon pigs as well. Like most farmers, I suppose, I never satisfied for long. And when old George Owens decided to retire, it gave me the chance I'd been waiting for, to lay my hands on another couple of hundred acres next door to mine. Stocking would be easy. The animals could do with more breathing space, and the tractors I had could probably tackle the extra work easily enough. But I wanted to keep most of it in corn, and the big bottleneck was going to be harvesting. So one thing was for sure, we'd need a new combine. One morning, when we weren't too busy, I told Jock to keep an eye on things while I went over to see my neighbor, Jim Raven. My daughter, Sue, was knocking around in the yard. I asked her if she'd like to come for the ride. She was at a bit of a loose end, though horses seem to take up most of her time when she's at home. So off we went. When we got there, Jim was waiting for us in the yard. He's pretty go-ahead when it comes to mechanized farming. Always trying out new ideas. And I must say, he's got a lot of the answers. We're going up to the 40 acres, he said. I've got something to show you. Aren't you going to tell me what it is first? You just drive on, he said. You'll see. Well, well, massive Ferguson have certainly gone to town on this one. Come on, Jim said. I'll show you over her before she starts work. Look at this. They've stiffened the whole body with sheet metal sections. Very light, but very strong. Pretty solid flight of steps. Down below, young Frank was checking the fuel level. There's 40 gallons of diesel in there, by the way. Now here's one of the best things that's ever happened. You've got all the major controls right beside you. Raise and lower the reel. Variable speed control, table lift. They're all hydraulic, of course. You can set the concave and alter cylinder speed without leaving your seat. And how about this? You've got a foot-operated clutch now, independent disc brakes for tight turns, and if you pick up a stone, just press this pedal to stop the table drive. Now you hang on while I go around the other side. How about maintenance, I asked. There was bound to be a snag somewhere. Don't you believe it. Do you know how many grease points there are? Only 25. Only 25? That's a great improvement. Just take a look at the engine, he said. Everything to hand. Beautifully laid out job. And it's got all the guts you want. 72 horsepower. It's completely enclosed. Round the other side, he showed me the fan controls. Quickest adjustment yet. Just turn the handle to alter your fan speed. Here you've got a rethrasher. Unthrashed heads go up this little elevator and into here, where they're rethrashed by a small drum. You adjust it, just like that. If the feed gets blocked up, a hooter blows. And another thing, Jim said, masses have gone all out on safety. All your drives are completely covered, not just the ones laid down in the regulations. I must say, they're well ahead of the times there, and I'm all for it. Well, all set to go. What really staggered me was when it started cutting. Must have been shifting nearly twice as fast as my old one. See the grain tanks, said Jim. There are two of them, one on each side. They hold about 65 bushels between them. And the beauty of it is, having two like that keeps the combine balanced and makes it stable on hillsides. And of course, the whole thing's a piece of cake for the driver. He can see exactly what he's doing and everything's at his fingertips. Your crop goes smoothly from cutter bar to cylinder and can't wrap. The 37 inch cylinder is more than enough to cope with this tremendous throughput.
behind the cylinder, you've got an extra large separating area and open type straw walkers, which always keep clear. You won't find any volunteer crops sprouting up here. It's beautifully compact, and the highest point is only nine foot seven. Do you know, said Jim, it's getting in my harvest at over five tons an hour. Five tons? Why, that's about three acres. Well, I had to get back, but I began to think this would be the answer to our harvest problem. town next day, I dropped in on Bill Bradshaw. He chuckled when I told him I'd seen Jim Raven's combine. Ah, yes, that's the new 400, he said. But you come along with me. I've got something really exciting to show you. So we drove out to a farm some miles away, a place I hadn't been to before. A pretty big operation, too. Must be over a thousand acres, I thought, judging from the size of the buildings. Just for a moment, I thought this was Jim Raven's machine all over again until I realized it was a good deal bigger. I asked Bradshaw how many of these new models there are. Two, he said. The 400 and the 500. They're basically the same, except for their size. This one's the 500. Come on, we'll catch him while he's turning. He introduced me to the young man who was doing a spell at the wheel. Why don't you come round the field, he suggested. There's plenty of room and no extra charge. That's just what I wanted. As far as I could see, the control layout was exactly the same as on the 400, all beside the driver. A perfect view of the work, too. Not bad, is it, he said. You thinking of getting one? It's on the cards. Tell me more about it. Well, he said, we've got a fair size spread here, and the thing that means most to us in a combine is capacity. We've been getting in up to seven tons of grain an hour, and there's no doubt about it, it's got a bigger output than any other combine we've ever had. What's more, it's only nine foot nine inches high, which is about two feet lower than its nearest rival. That counts a lot when you're on the slope. Let me see if I can remember some more statistics. The engine's 94 horsepower. We've got a 12-foot table, though you can have a 10-foot if your gates are narrow. I must say it handles beautifully. It's got power steering. You can go on for hours without getting tired, and you don't get much dust up here either. If you look behind you, you'll see the saddle tanks. You can fill whichever one you like first, which is very useful if you're on a steep slope. This lever switches the flow to the other tank. In case you're wondering about that whirligig thing on the side of the engine, it's the radiator screen. It spins round to throw off the charge. Thanks for the ride, I said. I could certainly do with all that seven-ton capacity with those extra acres to take care of. Well, 
that just about settled it. I told Bradshaw he could put me down for a 500 next year. And do you know, even if I hadn't got those extra acres, I'd still want one of these new Massey Fergusons. Thank you.